This is Performers Wanted. And we're here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm very excited. I actually wanted to do something like this, um, like, last year. Um before there was ever even a podcast, I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I want to want to talk to like other scare actors and and what they they do." Um, and it's spooky season. It is spooky season. Spooky season pretty much happened last month already. You know, as long as the Michaels was open, the spirits were open, <laughs> and <laughs> we were all getting ready for our haunts. And now they are all open. And this is, as you already know, for anyone listening, we're talking about scare performers this particular time and our shared experience of this crazy thing we call scare acting, you know, uh, and we have a few different people here with me today. And I'm actually going to be a part of this round table because I scare act myself. Um, normally I mediate, but now I'm going to be involved. I'm in the mix of things today. I'm in the mix of things. Uh, we we have Bryant coming back. <laughs> We have Brian coming back. Why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself again? For, I know we've had you on this before, but go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up, here? What's up everybody? I'm Bryant. Uh, I've been working for the Walt Disney Company for about eight years now and uh, hold a variety of different things. And uh, I am participating in Oogie Boogie Bash this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. That's yep. all you can do. That's it. That's, it. That's the come, most detail that I can give. <laughs> just come find him. Come find him. If you have your ticket already, because I think it might be sold out, come find him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And yeah, so, I mean, new folks, new folks that who have never been in the pod before. Megan, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Perfect. Well, my name is Megan, and I am currently a scare actor at Halloween Horror Nights this year, but um, I've done the previous three years so this is my fourth year at hhn a veteran a veteran <laughs> in the game at this point and check out the for anyone who's like watching this on like youtube or anything like that look at the the background um she she is ready for today <laughs> definitely and also new who i actually just physically seen and talked to like a few minutes ago and <laughs> met <laughs> This morning, technically, because it was like really late. Uh, Chris, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Good morning. My name is Christine. I'm also currently working at Not Scary Farm. This is my second year. I took a break last year and I'm working in Carnival this year. Mm-hmm. Nice. And. I'm your host, Darius Fry, and currently at HHN, we're not going to be talking about that. I'm going to talk about my first home, which is a Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, um, which I love. I love that event, and I love being there. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but I guess uh, just kind of starting in with it, because these are kind of like varying events. People have different opinions about like where they like to go the most, and most people will just go to all of them. <laughs> Most people are just going to like, you, we'll see the same people at all of these different things. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll start with this question. I'll ask Megan first. Megan, what got you into like the scare acting gig? Um, you know, honestly, it kind of all happened by accident, but it also <laughs> felt very meant to be at the same time. Uh, my first introduction to Horror Nights was as a guest in 2019 um mm-hmm. i dragged some friends along who were all scared and i was also scared but i was like yeah i'm terrified but they're doing a stranger things maze that sounds so cool because i'm a really big fan of the mm-hmm. show and um i missed the first one they did in 2018 but in 2019 right. i was like okay we're not missing this one i have to mm-hmm. see it and it was also very 80s themed they would do 80s nights in 2019 as well um so they had Ghostbusters and Killer Clowns from Outer Space that same year as Stranger Things. And I was like, what a lineup. Like, that's insane. That's so cool. And Mm -hmm. I had been to like smaller haunts back home in the Bay Area in San Francisco, but I had never been to something like that. Uh, I hadn't been to Universal. I hadn't been Horror Nights. Uh, So I was just like, that sounds amazing. So I went as a guest, had an amazing time. We had so much fun. we 
bought tickets to come back a second time while we were still there. Our first mm-hmm. night, like our first visit, we were still in line for like the last maze and we were like, we need to come back. And then we bought tickets to come back again a week later. So nice. we just fell madly in love. Um, myself, especially uh, me and my boyfriend, both. We were like, this is amazing. Uh, we were like, how can we do this? How can we participate in this? Like, how did all these people like get these roles? How can I be a part of this? Um, in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, just like look up an audition. Duh. But mm-hmm. I was just so enamored by it. And so, um, I don't know, just under its spell that we were like, how can we be a part of this? And that also felt kind of unrealistic at the time because we were both working at Disney in entertainment mm-hmm. at the time. So we were very mm-hmm. busy with that. So we were like, how, how we, can we be a part of this? And, um, to make kind of a long story short, uh, then COVID hit in 2020 and I ended up making some friends online through an audition. And I did, um, kind of a staged reading new works, uh, performance and made this friend group. And just by coincidence, that whole friend group was like, yeah, we're all scare actors at Horror Nights. You should come be in it. And I was like, oh, you guys do Horror Nights? And they were like, yeah, like just like come That's audition right. come be a part of it and i was like okay like we fell in love with it a couple of years ago that sounds amazing they were like yeah if you and your boyfriend are interested like we'll show you the application tell you what to do like come be a part of it with us and so we just kind of like blindly jumped in we applied uh we were both uh laid off from disney at the time so that was kind of on break which was the perfect opportunity to get into horror nights because we didn't have that conflict uh And we applied, we got in, and we had the most magical, amazing first year ever in 2021. We had so much fun. And uh, Mm -hmm. that's basically the story of how I got into it. So we honestly kind of fell into it. I got so lucky that I even auditioned for that uh, performance in the first place, Uh, Mm -hmm. got in, made friends with the cast, and they were all just coincidentally um, HHN scare actors. And they were like, come be a part of the family. And I was like, this is meant to be, this is amazing. And I applied, got in and, and had an amazing time. And the rest is history. I've been back every year, every year since then. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, uh, I was just meeting you. I'm just meeting you this year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> funny, funny enough, I, I've been at Universal for about a year and I didn't even meet you like right off the bat. I think it was like, we had been doing things for maybe like a week already. Like, like we, yeah. we, you know, and then, I see him like, oh, hey, <laughs> like I see you in a costume. I'm just like, you're in that costume. Yeah, I, I was also else, like, yeah, kind of thrown into it um, at the last minute because I think the cast had all met each other already. Um, but the yeah. the role that I was do- I'm doing was open and not filled yet, so they kind of threw me in that um, a little bit later. So that's why mm-hmm. I, I feel like I came into it. Everyone had already kind of met and knew each other, and I was like, I'm here. <laughs> Um, but yeah. yeah, 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 you fell in pretty great. Bearing the lead, too, just like yeah, Meg and I are in Horror Nights together, we're in the same cast, mm-hmm. um, and that's how we, we met. Um, yes, yes, come find us, that's all I'll say. <laughs> um, just come find us. Um, I'll, I'll see you before you see me, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> So, Christine, um, same question for you. How did you jump into it? You seem like you've been doing it for a minute. Yeah, well, because I started back in 2018. Um, I had been doing musical theater, like, go-go audition type thing way before the pandemic. Things were different. How things change. Um, one of my friends went into audition for Dark Harbor, and I was like, you know what? That looks kind of cool. And coming from a person that was terrified of, like, all sorts of, like, haunted houses, I was like, okay, like, sure, let's go to the one that's actually haunted. Awesome. (laughs) That's a great idea. (sighs) So um, I auditioned, and then uh, I was put in May's Lullaby. Um, I actually wasn't Scary Mary at first. I was, like, a little monkey. And then I started having an allergic reaction to the latex. And then mm. um, Wally, David Wally, who's in charge of the event. I'm not sure if he's still in charge of the event now, how that all works. Mm. But um, he's like, let's put you in Mary. And I was like, okay. Um, and then I was just there. <laughs> and then I got to <laughs> for the rest of the season. It was really cool. 
Honestly, I love Mary so much. I would go back into a maze just to be Mary again. I love her so much. But um, <laughs> then in 2022, I was working as a bandit at Knott's Berry Farm. And I was like, you know what? I think it would be fun to be a spooky, scary skeleton again. So <laughs> let's try my hand at doing the Scary Farm auditions. And then I wound up in Carnival. And it was mm. the best time ever. So cool. I was welcomed with open arms into the haunt community. I mean, I already did um, Dark Harbor, but it was just different. Coming into a mm-hmm. position, there was so much more love and being thrown into such a huge community and with so much love. I was like, oh my gosh, like, goodbye. Um, but yeah, then I took a break last year because I was doing, um, oh gosh, what was I doing? Hello. Um, oh, Adam's Family. I was doing Adam's Family with SDMT and I missed still on, it. Still on brand. So still much. Brand. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I missed it a lot. So I came back. And now I'm in a different position, but I love it so much. I love being a clown. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> you know, I definitely concur. And it's funny, like, you saying, like, oh, someone who's, like, afraid to go through mazes. Because when I see the stuff that you, like, post. <laughs> I'm a menace. <laughs> you're terrifying. <laughs> you, I it, have made people piss their pants, cry, you name it. <laughs> I am <terrifying>. relentless. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, looked, it was like a jump scare just even like looking at like your Instagram. Like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're perfect. They're perfect. Okay, <laughs> but still. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and all right, B. So we got a little bit of your story because again, you've been with Walt Disney Company for almost a decade, um, and uh, <laughs> but. Yeah. As far as like Boogie Bash goes, is this your first time doing it or have you done it before? This is uh this is technically my second time doing it. Um I did it last year with uh a different character. Um, but I'd only done it maybe twice, so I didn't really get to feel like the full impact of performing at uh Oogie Boogie Nights. And mm-hmm. then this year, um I'm uh, I'm a I'm a certain character that mm-hmm. is a lot more involved, and mm-hmm. so um, he has a higher priority. And so mm-hmm. I'm getting scheduled twice, like two two out of the three parties a week. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm definitely getting the full impact of what it's like to work Oogie Boogie Bash, um, and it is like nothing I've ever done. And it's my absolute favorite style of performing. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just, it's just me. Hang on, I'm just trying to figure out how I, I can. I can say, hey. <laughs> me on a stage with a microphone, and it's just like <laughs> guests going by, and I'm just like one liners and like you know fun. fun little fun. fun little light fun little light teasing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing that would make them like nothing that would like ruin their night, you know. It's just like light mm-hmm. roasting. Mm-hmm. Um that people just get a kick out of and it has been my abs because i uh before oogie boogie bash when it was the mickey's not so scary halloween Mm -hmm. um on disneyland side i was i was doing that too um but it was still like a different capacity we hadn't reached to what disney's halloween is now at disneyland or uh disney california adventure right um so the whole concept of the way that they're running things now is only when did they start doing Oogie Boogie Bash? Like four, three, four years ago? Something like that. Something like that. So it's still a relatively new concept. Um, and I, it's just like magic. I mean, mm-hmm. they, it, he has become my absolute favorite character because of it. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the best. Oh, man. And, you know, and you, you've covered a decent amount you know of friends you know throughout your time so like that's 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 huge yeah that's really really huge just when i thought i was ready to step out they (laughs) pull me back in period (laughs) they found god now i gotta hang out for as long as he's hanging out (laughs) i love that 
I love that. You know, um, I guess, you know, I guess I'll go into it, you know, too, with me, because for a while I was also on the same boat as Christine. Like, I, I'm also, like, a bit of a scaredy cat going through <laughs> things, like, myself. Like, I'm just like, oh, oh like, so I got to, I got to. Um, it was it was actually the Haunted Hayride that kind of, like, got me to kind of break out of my shell and go through things. You know, for a while it was like a a tradition, like, so you started some years back to kind of just go to it, but only do the like the hayride part, like just like to sit in like the tractor and just kind of like where I'm safe, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just you know go through that until like they started implementing different things where it's like, oh, we're gonna stop the tractor, you get off, and then we'll pick you up later. So like, and it used to be at the the old like abandoned zoo. Um, so you're just like walking through things, and it's just like, oh my gosh, but then. I started to get a little better at it because um, as a kid, you know, even going like Universal, like the the Mummy and Van Helsing and House of Horrors, I'm just clinging to like my mother, like just like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> just like <laughs> as a little kid. Um, but then I started to notice like, OK, like I'm getting more into this, you know, I'm, I'm able to go through like the walking dead and not like flinch that much, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of <laughs> used to it and seeing it in a different way. And I've, I've also loved like interactive and immersive theater, like for a long time. I, I love that aspect of it. Um, and I was into horror movies, so it was weird how like I couldn't go through things without being like, ah, you know, um, so I was kind of, you know, in San Diego, I was kind of helping, like, organize, like, a, a smaller, like, haunt, like, pop-up haunt. Like, I would, like, wasn't really scaring in it, but I would just, like, I would kind of create the maze and what, you know, would make a good scare or whatever. And I think it was 2021 where I actually put myself in it. I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this um, and see what I, I do. And it was, like, the most, like, stoic character that i created for myself where i was just literally just like i would show up places you know not <laughs> saying much but it would just freak people out and he said you know what i think it might be time and the following year i saw that you know an ad that 13th floor who you know does the uh, haunted hayride and in uh dark harbor and other things like that you know like was looking for scare actors so i i decided to reach out see if it was too late to do so and they got back to me like immediately like they were just like oh yeah definitely and then sent me a whole bunch of dates are you able to do these dates <laughs> and i was just like at the time i was like i was kind of traveling back and forth between cities so i was like i don't know if i could do every date so i'm thinking oh that's done but then they're like oh okay well we'll still take you but we're gonna put you part of something called scare force scare force being um basically an on like an on call position if you if we need you for something you'll we'll drop you in a different place so i said oh okay you know um i'll go ahead and do that but it was also so weird i was like i didn't have to do anything like because i knew people had said like oh they auditioned before so like me kind of going in and be like uh let me just make sure this is not a scam or nothing like that but i I go ahead and go to the training. And when you are in Scare Force, cause there's two days of training, training for all the mazes, training for the hayride itself. You can choose which one you want to go to if you're Scare Force, because it really doesn't matter. And mm. so I, I went to like a hayride one and I remember feeling like weird. Um, just a little sad because they're like calling out the different ones. Like, oh, we have all the werewolves over here, all the clowns over here. And like Scare Force will put you over here. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, like I, that's, I'm not a part of anything, you know, um, but where I thought I probably wouldn't be working that much, I ended up working so much and did every attraction at that event that year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so many different like costumes. So many, and it was, it was a little different that year because it was like a little COVID was still very real. So like, if you were on scare force, you never had a mask. It was always face paint. So mm -hmm. like, I was a bunch of different types of clowns, a bunch of different types of zombies, a bunch of different types of skeletons, ghouls, ghosts with like a robe on in different places. And it was one of my favorite things 
to do is like coming in, not particularly knowing where I was going to be, but knowing that I was going to have to like change up. So like it went from me being like, oh, I don't have a specific like permanent role to me being like, oh my gosh, I'm everywhere. I love it to the point where I came back the next year and they asked, oh, where do you want to be? I'm like, Scare Force. <laughs> I want to do it all. I want to do it all. Um, and I still love that event. I love the, the theme of it, that small time theme of it, you know. Um, and it's a, yeah, it, it is definitely incredible. And I think my favorite thing is definitely being a clown because, <laughs> yes, <see? laughs> yeah, because there was a maze called a slaughterhouse with the S like slashed out to make it laughter house so it was just like so it was just like a big slaughterhouse full of clowns and when i tell you we used to heat them up in there we used to <laughs> we used to do so much you know and to the point where like if i was to go to the on a hayride during my own runs like as a guest I would be afraid to go through the mazes myself because I never knew what they were going to do. <laughs> so much <Menaces>. freedom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's the, I mean, that's how I got started and, you know, how I'm here now still doing, still scaring people um, quite often. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's it. we're in a, interesting position where I think like when you know when uh people talk about like what they're going to do or their haunts or anything that kind of goes like um viral on the haunts is like these four are the ones that kind of come up um the most often and I you know I want to I'll throw it back to not scary because like actually I was talking to some friends about it like they kind of brought it up you know because um you know, they were talking about going to other haunts like Fright Fest or anything like that. And then someone was like, hey, if you like, if you don't actually know, you know, not scary is actually kind of crazy. It kind of goes, it kind of goes crazy out there. Um, I mean, Knott's. Oh, yeah, Knott's. Yeah. It's, it's the only, it's the only ever time that I've ever been to Knott's Bay Farm. I live down the street. Really? I've never gone to Knott's Berry Farms. I only go during Not Scary Farms. Ah. No way. Well, to take yeah. line off that, I've never been to Universal Studios. I only went to Horror Nights for the first time this year. So, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> so fun. You went to, when did you go? Oh, gosh. It was right before our season started. It was the week before our season started, but I had so much fun. Mm. I would definitely go again. It was so cool. The fire? Are you kidding me? I wish we had oh, a I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I got scared once, which is impressive because I'm so desensitized at this point because it's funny. I used to be scared, but now I'm just like, try yeah, me. Look at it from a different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, looking from a different lens. And, you know, just also to piggyback on that, you know, been to Disney a few times, never actually got a chance to see the Boogie Bash. Sorry, Brian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's It's hard to get into. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when we were doing our sort of like um, meeting where they sort of like bring in all the performers and they talk to us about like the expectations of the season and uh, how uh, just sort of the over encompassing, literally like the, the thing that stood out to me the most was um, they said this, this event literally sells out within seconds of, of opening it does. Like, the virtual mm -hmm. queue, the amount of, uh, and, it blows my mind too that like of one, how quickly it sells out and two, just like there are some people who will literally buy multiple tickets to come to this event. And yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things like as a performer, when, you know, like if I want my fiance to come or if I want like friends to come and see me, I don't have any guarantee of like, if they buy the ticket, am I going to be on that day? I'm learning, I'm figuring out the system now that I could, you know, set it up to where they could see me. But just like trying to understand like conceptualize of like dang like you pretty much have to preemptively pick your days and mm -hmm. kind of commit to that um otherwise you're kind of sol mm -hmm. but i'm yeah. hoping next year will be different i'm I'm figuring out the system a lot better and um my mom was like yeah i really want to come see you i was like 
all right, I'll <laughs> try to get into the virtual queue and see what we can do. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it was, it was a goal this year. It was a mm-hmm. goal. And even though I'm, I will be going to Disney at some point, which, you know, Disney itself still, you know, is fun for like, you know, spooky Halloween and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know, like, uh, you know, with Nightmare Before Christmas and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, last year, um, around this time, I, I did go to Disney and it was, we had like a, a park hopper pass. So what we did is like, you know, eventually we go over there and I see like, this group of people who were outside already, maybe like hours before like mm-hmm. uh, Boogie Bash is even going to start. And the thing is, even though it's a lot of people, it is not a lot of people. Like it's not like a huge group of people that are waiting in that like line. And the mm-hmm. line's like you know locked off. Like that's just it. And they got like their like costumes on, and I'm looking. And I'm like, oh, this oh, oh this is like members. Oh, this this feels like. <laughs> A bouncer yeah. here, like <laughs> they, I think they start mixing probably around maybe three o'clock. So for those who have tickets for Oogie Boogie Bash, they can start going into the park around three o'clock, and then, uh, or maybe it's five, depending on the event. Um, and then like at six o'clock, if you don't have a wristband, you're uh, they they'll have like security kind of lined up, and they just like slowly start pushing you out. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, however, um, for you. If you're in certain spots at certain times, you can see some of the characters mm. before Oogie Boogie Bash because whether it's they're just traveling to their location or whatever, um, because it's not like it's a hard out at you know six o'clock right. when the event starts. They just don't. They just like limit what you can do, and they eventually push you out. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're in the right place at the right time you can catch a glimpse at, at some of the characters. So yeah. that's something that I've also been learning, um, which is pretty fun for those who want to like, ah, like I couldn't get tickets, but like if I could just see one character, it's like you, you figure out mm-hmm. where and when you'll get to see something. That's a, yeah, that is very, very good to know. <laughs> we, we can talk about that later when you go. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll chat up a little bit. <laughs> um, so I guess we, you know, we were talking a little bit briefly about this before we uh, started recording, but like, um, you know, is as fun as as fun as being a scare actor is, you know, there. I mean, there are moments. <laughs> there are moments. Yeah. The the nature of the the holiday itself is, um, you know, because you have your your edge of it where it's like. Okay, it's just like spooky, fun, Halloween town, hocus pocus, like things like that. But then you have like the the complete like opposite end of the spectrum where it's like saw. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh my favorite of the world. <laughs> yeah. And the you know, in the mix of all that, you know, there's the debaucherous nature of it. So like we, we do have run ins, um, which we're always kinda like warned of, I guess these experience you know i can i can go up and i'll I'll even like say just a specific experience for for me um and this was not last year last year wasn't as bad for some reason for me but like the year before um kind of dealt with a lot like it it was it was it was weird i think like i I was a i was in a in an attraction called a midnight mortuary so like the idea of the Eliana Hayride is that it's all the same theme. It's like stuck in 1985. It's always Halloween and it's always celebrating like it's like tricentennial. So it's always stuck there. So all the different mm-hmm. attractions have to do with each other. Nice. So yeah, so like the the Hayride itself is like the backwoods and then like you have it's mortuary, then it's, you know, it's slaughterhouse and then like there's a whole neighborhood which is just like trick or treat. Um, it was a whole this neighborhood where it's like it's just craziness, and I'm in the mortuary section of it, and uh, I'm like with a bunch of like you know caskets and stuff, and it's dark in there. It's it's probably darker in there than you know a lot of others because it is you know we're actually I'm in the office where the caskets are, <laughs> and I will you know this guy he was 
he was drunk. He was like he was he was drunk, but it was like it was almost like he didn't want to tip himself over to like the major drunk because I'm pretty sure his family was with him, but he was he had had a few. <laughs> he had had a few, and all these events often sell alcohol too. So like, um, is one of the weirdest things he was like after I'm like interacting with him, he tr- he's trying he tried to tickle me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> like, it was like the weirdest. Like, what the f-? like it was like he was trying, and it was like weird because when I talk about it now, it's kind of funny. But in the moment, but, like, like when I'm just like, now, <laughs> I'm just so upset. <laughs> I was like, because I was like really angry. Like, I was just like, okay, let me just leave the maze real quick. <laughs> let them know this dude tried to tickle me. But when I think about it, I was just like, that's what he was doing and like that's one of the lesser things that happened like that season I don't know why but it was like it was just like a, a weird thing I mean like it's just are there is there anything that like I like annoy you about like you know um, certain things that, I mean whatever you like feel comfortable sharing or anything like that is there anything that went down like <laughs> Megan's like Yes. <laughs> like, like, it was like absolutely like what I mean <laughs> what what happened? What's going on? Um so so much. Um, I probably have a list somewhere of all the crazy things that happened. Uh but uh one thing I remember well I'll sort of answer your question on like what like gets like annoying and like irritating and then also like just something that happened. So one thing that happened, um I've heard like really, really crazy things. Nothing that crazy happened to me, but um in twenty twenty two, uh in another how a uh, maze that I was not in, um, someone popped out for their scare and someone I don't exactly know what happened, but their reaction was to like punch them in the face and I believe they broke her jaw. So, like, it does get that crazy. Yes, um, he was arrested. She was taken off to the hospital. Uh, As far as I know, she's fine. Um, She's okay. (laughs) um, So, like, it can get that crazy. Mm -hmm. Not to, like, discourage anyone from, like, trying scare acting or what have you. Obviously, hearing that, like, yeah, if I heard that before going into it, I would have been like, um, Mm -hmm. what? Uh, But there's a lot of, like, safety protocols that, like, they put in place for us that you need to have in place for yourself, you know, and, and things Mm. like, um, knowing that that can happen. So like, you know, know how far to reach over and to not reach over and et cetera. Mm. So, so there's things you can do to protect yourself, but of course, you know, that wasn't her fault. That just happened. So it can happen. Um, nothing that crazy ever happened to me, but, uh, I did have, I was in like the final scare of my maze in 2022 and it was a reach actually. It was like a curtain where you just like reach out and come out at them. Mm-hmm. And, um, I reached out and this guy, uh, cause you, you can get like hit and touched by accident. Definitely people like reacting, like yeah. have been like, like this and like, they'll, they'll hit you by accident. And it's very clear. Like, Oh, yeah. you didn't need to hit me. It's fine. We're both fine. Moving on. <laughs> um, but <I'm> like, <laughs> uh, It, like, happened in slow motion, but all probably happened in under a second as well. I swear I saw him, like, wind up, and he just went for my hand as I was reaching out, and he punched me in the fingers really, really hard, and this finger, like, swelled up really bad. Um, And it was, it hurt and was swollen for, like, at least, like, two, three days. Um, I was fine. I was okay. You know, they, they got it on camera. We're able to go find him, and... You know, they take their own protocols depending on what happened. They'll like either go and like give you a warning, like your first warning, your second warning, depending on how bad it is. You can get arrested. You can get escorted out of the park. You can get banned for life. Like it, there's just a lot of things that go into it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I um, got punched once in the hand and that was probably the most scary one. It, it really hurt. And when I jump back into my hide, it's totally dark in there other than mm-hmm. a little bit of light from the monitor. And I just was like, I don't know what just happened. That guy got really close to my face. My finger hurt so bad. I just started crying in the hide in the dark mm-hmm. and pressed my panic button, which we have at Horror Nights, um, which mm-hmm. uh, sh- like they can check the camera. When I press that, they'll go back and look at whatever happened before I press that button to see what the incident was. You come off, you go talk to the 
people in the monitor room, let them know, uh, security will come and talk to you, et cetera. So we, we have a lot of protocols in place. I remember I pulled myself off and I'm just like crying, confused. It was dark. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I just saw him wind up and all of a sudden he was in my face and my finger is so swollen and it hurts so bad. Um, so that's probably one of the craziest things that ever personally happened to me, which is not even anywhere near the craziest that can and does happen, but it was really startling. It was really um, like scary at the time. Uh, and I say, I think besides like getting touched or punched, uh, which is obviously terrible. Um, besides that, I think, uh, guests being just generally disrespectful is one of the most terrible things. I'm sure every single one of us here in one way or another has experienced that. Um, and yeah, it just like, it, and it's odd too. Cause like they'll, they'll say, a lot of terrible stuff and it like doesn't like hurt my feelings it doesn't make me feel bad but it just makes me want to like put my prop down and be like uh, I'm a person, why are dude. you here then you know if they're like screaming yeah. in your face like you're not scary or like mm -hmm. well, i'm trying to think of other examples of things that they've said but like i'm just confused at like why you're here you bought the ticket and came mm -hmm. here to to scream at me that like I don't look right. good or I am okay. not scaring you or what have you. I'm like, Rude. that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> that exactly. like, right. You're here and not enjoying it. Like you don't have to be here. If you don't like the space, like I'm in the final room. It's almost over when you exit, you can go mm -hmm. home. Like, so I think right. a disrespectful guest is one of the most annoying and irritating parts of it because they will like, threaten you, scream at you, et cetera. And it's like, um, it just gets really mentally draining and exhausting. And again, it doesn't like, doesn't feel hurtful personally. I know some people like come off and they're like really sad about something that somebody said. And I totally get that. But for me, it, it doesn't feel like hurtful. I'm just like, it just makes me scratch my head and say like, why would you scream that at somebody? Like I'm just here doing my job. Right. Um, and the, the, just the weird things that they'll scream at us about, like, our outfit or our bodies or our makeup or whatever. I'm like, would you, like, scream that at, like, your Target cashier? Right. Because <laughs> that person's also <laughs> just doing their job. Right. Or, like, would you go to a play and scream that, like, right. to the person on stage or to, like, your barista? Like, <laughs> so I think that's honestly, especially um, this year, I'm experiencing it more because I, um, in my role this year, I'm more so performing a scene a little bit more than scaring i would say um when you're scaring it's a little easier you jump out do the scare you pop back inside and you're gone mm -hmm. um and it still happens when you're when you're like full scaring as well um but i think it's even harder this year because i'm kind of on stage the whole time i'm not popping in and out and i'm sort of performing a show, show scene so they're just like walking by and it's just like a constant like me just constantly listening to the disrespect um yeah. and I, i'd say like weirdly enough they're a little bit better with me but with my scene partners um the other two people that i'm in the scene with they're just like like i'll come off set and say like those people were ruthless they're just like screaming the most awful things at these performers not even at me to my scene partners it makes me want to like stop and be like what is wrong with you why did you just say that to my scene partner like it's yeah this is a disrespect and um just lack of respect lack lack of courtesy and just the behavioral issues i think are one of the worst part because i'll come off set and they weren't even screaming these things at me and i just feel like i need to like put my head down because mm -hmm. it's exhausting um is hearing people act like that and yeah it's usually teenagers which is also crazy because um i would not have done that as a teenager um like no. I, I know they're teenagers i know they're kids and they're young and they're still learning but like i would have never gone in and screamed those things at a performer as a teenager so like no. that's crazy but also it sometimes is full-grown adults and that's even worse the worst so yeah it's, yeah it's the absolute worst when it's an adult because you're like oh my gosh you're like probably close to my age you're a grown-up adult like what is wrong with you but um but i would say that's like like one of the worst things that has happened in my experience and also one of the worst things about it is just the general um lack of respect from the public that comes to attend and it's just a percentage of of what you deal with of course like most guests are like 
so grateful and so kind and like so fun to interact with. And you can tell that they're here having such a good time or like, you know, if you're in something that's like an IP, they'll come in and like all the merch and you can tell they're like a big fan of like what you're doing. Or if you're like in an original house and they'll just go through like cheering and screaming, you know, for yeah. this new original piece of work that was created for Horror Nights or what have you. So most guests, yes, of course, are wonderful and so nice yes. to interact with and make this so fun and so special because what we're doing is for them we're performing for you but um that percentage of guests that are disrespectful is probably one of the worst worst things yeah. to do with <laughs> yeah christine speak on that because you're out in the wild yeah. <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh <laughs> boy um i feel like i got it pretty easy in 2022 i can speak on what happened to me and what happened to a lot of the other marys which is interesting considering we're playing a dead child the comments <laughs> that we would get from grown men oh gosh mm -hmm. um i remember gosh i can't even remember the code word for dark harbor it's been so long but it's like code like red or yellow or something because we would get touched because I'd do like a back bend and then they'd try to like go up under my skirt. Yeah. Crazy. So ugh. um I will say this year, even week one, I am wearing way different of costume than I'm used to on the street. Awesome. I love my look. I'm very grateful that they let me do it. I actually did my costume myself. So awesome. But I'm not used to wearing a, a skirt on streets. So yeah. the comments, oh my gosh, like it's distracting. Like, just let me do my job. I don't, oh gosh. Um, even like being like, hey, Harley Quinn. And I'm just like, that's not my name. Um, this mm -hmm. year, they're allowed to take pictures with us. In 2022, that wasn't a thing. Yeah. So it's just like, take a picture with us. I'm like, can I get a please? Like, I'll even say that in Google sometimes. I'm just like, hello the grabbing of my hand to like yeet me into like a photograph is funny um i'm lucky because my character i can be a uh, mean girl because <laughs> that's my character mm -hmm. so Good. i will give you attitude back if you're mean to me but yeah the teenagers oh my gosh the teenagers mm -hmm. i will say <laughs> some of my favorite karma moments are going back and scaring them and being like gotcha Yep. why you don't do that i'll be like mm -hmm. do you want me to kick you out do you want me to tell the principal on you because i will i will right. oh i will <laughs> but yeah if anything it's just the horrible it's the horrible comments mm -hmm. get your yeah. life together like what Megan was saying like would you say together. that to someone on the street i mean i guess some people do sometimes but god <laughs> just like what's wrong with people i don't know <laughs> yeah it's like the nature of the I don't know, the event, people, like, almost, like, gear up yeah. to, you know, to talk mess. And, and sometimes I can I can tell sometimes if people are, like, joking as kind of like a uh, mm -hmm. a buffer, like, a you know, they're, they're, they're joking almost to, like, just kind of quell their own fear, you mm -hmm. know, like, but then some people are just in there just, like, really just, like, acting up, you know, yeah. just just acting up, you know, it's... You know, if we go to a different <laughs> corner of the Bryant, <laughs> like, how, how, how are we feeling? How are we uh, no, yeah, everything, everything everyone has been saying has been like factual, even at Disney, um, which, you know, trying to understand like the psychological element of it, you know, because like I get it. I kind of get it. I say that in the sense of like, you know, I'm trying to trying to see it from their perspective, like they spend all this money, they want to be immersed, they want to, you know, they want to like really get into it. And there is that suspension of belief of like, you know, like that is the character, which has been great for the theme parks to be able to establish that and create that sort of mysticism and that veil that people can fully feel immersed. Mm -hmm. And I think people forget because of the, the quality that, you know, these companies have been able to to create people forget that we are people too and so that's where like you know the filter drops and they just start you know i if they're creative and they're heckling in the way that they like try to get a rise out of us if they're creative about it 
I'm all for it. I'm like, hey, <laughs> let's do the back and forth. That's fun. Mm -hmm. This helps you out. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you, you know, because that's for me as a, uh, you know, my performance style is very much of like, I feed off of what the guests are giving me, right? So if they're creative with it and, you know, it's like a, it's like a little like duel between like, you know, quips and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you're just coming in and you're just like not being creative and you're just doing it to be malicious and mean, I'm like, all right, that's now it's not fun for anybody. I don't know what your end game is, you know, and that's where like it kind of turns me off. I had one particular instance uh, this current year, so I'm going to keep it super vague, but also trying to give as much detail as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I was up performing and there's a certain gimmick that I have and uh, I had a bunch of people just standing there trying to see the gimmick. And then there's this one particular lady who was just going at it, like to the point where it was almost like aggressive to where I was like, okay, I'm not going to do the gimmick because I'm not going to reward this bad behavior. <laughs> and they got everybody, uh, they, they tried to like goad me and like, oh, I bet it's not real. I bet it's fake. Da, 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 da. And I should have been a little bit better, but the minute that she was like, oh, I bet it's fake AI, fake news. And I was like, oh, you're one of those mortals. <laughs> and then she starts popping off and I talked over her and I was like, Ugh. like in my mind, I'm like, oh, no, dang it. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, and then she got everybody in the crowd chanting. And then they almost immediately, as fast as they went up, they, it went down to her. And I just kind of looked at her and I was like, didn't really work out well for you did it mm. uh it got everyone laughing and then i was like all right go on get out of here um so like i would luckily i was able to like redeem the moment to where like it didn't affect me as a performer emotionally mm -hmm. um and mentally but yeah there are some people who you know they come in and they try to get a rise at you but they don't do it the right way mm -hmm. and um and i think that's it's really that like whether it's like a um an entitled mentality because like you know they paid so much money to come to these events and they expect a certain level but they themselves aren't able to understand that you know yes we're here to entertain you we're here to like immerse you into this story but at the same time like you do need to understand that we are normal people this is not real and we are here to entertain you yes <laughs> And that's yeah. that's it's that disconnect that I think is what really yeah. stems a lot of these issues in in touching people inappropriately in you know verbally assaulting people and it's like you still have to understand that like verbal assault is still it's still assault you know you're mm -hmm. not physically touching me you're but you're verbally harassing me you know exactly. so it's like you gotta understand that people mm -hmm. yes yeah honestly um, I'm it's gonna like speak on. Forth zoo okay. animal mentality yeah. like, yeah, like yeah. we become the pet yeah. zoo yes. and they're like exactly. come on like yeah i'm gonna come go here, little goat. i want to pet you <laughs> exactly. Ah, exactly. No. yeah <laughs> yes yes i'll you know briefly just say where i where i am in this particular year is like an enclosure so like no. Oh, so, no. You are in the petting zoo. <laughs> yes, it's an enclosure, and even the, the IP that we are doing in the movie, it's actually uh, described as an enclosure. So, like, oh jeez. You know, so, like, yeah, that's especially what happens, especially when there's a nice, a nice conga line going through. With a nice conga <laughs> line going through, then there's nothing much I can really do i can't really hide i, I can't really <laughs> so i'm just just out yeah. there but um you know i'll speak on a little bit about a, a situation that happened last year that um it's you know it's a pretty serious situation it didn't specifically happen to me but when i think about it it really makes me angry um i so i was in a maze in this particular part of the maze we sometimes like change um where we are and um we you know just depending on who's on and who's off and cast a cast b or whatever and um i am in a section and next to me there's someone else because they would always give us like a large portion of a spot and we would just kind of like 
be able to kind of pick and like vibe off it's basically like miniature scare zones you know mm-hmm. as opposed to like popping out um and one of my castmates was um was a little person and she'd been doing that for a while and she was in like a large section by herself and there were a group of teens the teen boys about mm-hmm. five of them Uh-oh. who wouldn't they wouldn't leave her alone they basically mm-hmm. were like they were surrounding her um and kind of kept calling her by that particular derogatory term that uh, little people are <laughs> called. They just kind of kept doing it, uh, addressing her as mm. such, to the point where like they uh, they even started pulling out their phones and started like actually like filming as they were there, not moving in the maze. To the so I'm in a section that's right after hers. So like me, the only thing I can really do is go over in that section, get in front of her and like physically fan them to leave just just to go and like yeah. chase them off and um, it's, it's weird the things you get desensitized to because after we were off I went over to her I said hey like, are you okay that you know that was really not okay are you alright? She was like yeah you know it, it happens kind of all the time with me I was just like but it shouldn't though it shouldn't. Yeah. Like, we're just forming. Like, you fit this role, and we oh. fit this role. You know, you, you really shouldn't. It's really, it's really not okay. When I think about that, I'm like, ah, that's so upsetting. Like, it just makes me angry that something like that, like, she had to endure that sort of thing. So it was like, ugh, you know, and, yeah. you know, and it also goes to the show, like, luckily in a lot of these situations, we have folks that we can kind of go to and report to and talk to and, like, and get these people, like, booted out you know megan you were talking about like the cameras like earlier that's you know, like, nice they've been yeah. coming in clutch <laughs> we've been getting people kicked out left and right like we've been <laughs> you know it's been yeah, that's honestly been really great it's so i actually because i was a little scared to me in a scare acting yeah. i was like oh god like are people gonna like touch us and punch us and what have you and i was a little a little scared my first year and then they were like so you're on camera and the guests you're interacting with are on camera like there's a camera right on your spot and like you have a monitor you can see who's coming so if they're like super drunk and rowdy don't feel pressure to come out for those people like hold back and wait for the next group um mm-hmm. but yeah the fact that it's all recorded and that we have a panic button in our little hide that we can press step off run back to the monitor room say like hey just go back like 10 seconds from when i press the button you'll see what they did to me and then security will come they'll go find them in the park like they've like they'll literally get a description and i've seen them just like run and take off and they'll go find them talk to oh, them yeah. do what they, they have to do quick. i it's, wish it's uh, <laughs> yeah you know same. so we are really lucky yeah. in, in that sense <laughs> I want a little Wickedness. security camera and a button. Be like, go fetch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it like feels Christine, like. Sometimes. Yeah, Christine, you almost need like, like a cam on you. Like you. Yeah. Like... yeah, I mean, like, well, I can't really speak about incidences past, but there have been incidences that have gone viral, and it has not been mm-hmm. good because Carnival, just for whatever reason, is predisposed to going viral, good nor bad. Is we yeah. have a lot of light in our zone, so people just kind of and you know, sometimes uh, it's not fun. No, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a little because hey, right, we didn't really have cameras like that. We literally had to give them a description. Luckily, yeah. the the event was small town enough right. that like if you like if you act it up and then and here's the thing about like people who act up too if they act up with you more than likely they're going to act up with someone else mm-hmm. yeah so it's like right so they're they're going to be repeat offenders so someone you know if we don't catch them someone's going to catch them you know yeah, that that's sort of nice. thing and that's that's why we have the panic buttons because we're really trying to like make sure like okay you did it to me let's make sure it doesn't happen again because you know like something happened to me recently in the maze that it was like it, it was just such a weird thing like it, something happened you know i was you know i was you know essentially grabbed <laughs> you know by the arm like tugged and then i i left immediately did the you know kind of but left and said hey you know like 
something happened to me. Seconds after me, another cast member, hey, 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 I was just grabbed. Seconds after him, <laughs> someone came up like, hey, I was just grabbed. <laughs> like, it just repeat offending through the maze and tried to get to the next one and got kicked out before they could even get through. It was wow. amazing. Wild. Gosh. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, you know. Um, it's still ultimately fun. I know it's like we, there's a lot. It's still ultimately fun. Uh, obviously, we keep doing. We, yeah, <laughs> yeah. None of us are like doing this for the first time. Like, we, like, we, like we come back to it knowing that there's going to be some stuff. Um, oh yeah. You know, I, I guess I'll like go into this, and you know, I'll start with a. Uh, I'll see. You know, I'll start with Christine this time. Like, what is? your favorite thing about what you do or this year or last year, what's your favorite thing about it? Honestly, the community. Yeah. Community. I've never been a part of anything like this. It's so niche. Our hot community is so niche. It's right. so small yet so big at the same time. I feel like a lot of people know each other and even mm-hmm. throughout all of the different haunts, like we can all relate to each other because we've all had like we we're all talking about a bad guest or we've all either had like this amazing interaction or really cool opportunities and stuff like that. Um, for me, I guess personally, I'm not scary farm. I really love the ability to have a little bit of more um, a creative hand. Uh, for instance, when I was the ringmaster in 2022, a lot of that was my own costume. My current role, it's all my costume. So I was able to create that, which is all I was bad at. But I would do it again. Mm-hmm. It's so fun, and I'm so honored. I'm, I'm getting to do buffet this year, which is a really cool experience. It's basically like the mouse's kitchen, his dog, his dog's kitchen, <laughs> but with <laughs> scary things at Scary mm-hmm. Farm. Um, so that's a really cool opportunity. I've never done that before. So really cool meet and greet type yeah. stuff. But yeah, yeah community awesome. first and foremost my friends and my family yeah i'll definitely say that this is you know there was in the hayride because i i don't think i'm particularly allowed to do stuff like this this time where i'm at now but like what i would do with the hayride is just a a few different things that would just kind of like give shout outs to the community while i was in the maze if someone like walk like we're walking through and they were like in a dress that was covered in pumpkins or like they were like I had like, you know, like devil horns or something like that. You know, I would interact, but what I would always do is I would back up and I would bow to them. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's awesome. Funny. I would like bow to them. Like that would be my character. It was just like, <gasps> my queen. Like I would just always like bow to them. And also something else that I would do if like, because sometimes, and I don't, sometimes they bring like the littlest kids through these things. And, um, and if there's like a a little like a little kid like a little kid in there, and you know they're like going through and they're taking it in stride, they're scared, but they're going through and they're just like okay, then like you know like sometimes what I would do is like I would still be in character, but I would lift my hand up to let them high five me, oh, um, mm-hmm. and it was just like again, like not something that I'm really able to do, but it was just like or even for that matter, really supposed to do that time, but it was just like, they're it's too little to be through here. I'm just like, they're just too little. They're just babies. They're just through here. You know? I mean, that does exclude, like, the, the little troublemakers because you know who those are, too. A little poo. <laughs> but, like, if there's like, the little nice ones, like, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, high five. You came through here. You're not supposed to be in here. Like, you're not supposed to be in here, but go to Boogie Bash. Go to Boogie Bash. <laughs> go to Boogie Bash, you know? Um, but yeah, um, Megan. Yeah, what's what's your favorite thing about what you do? So um, this most this kind of tacks on to what Christine had said. But it, so as a performer, uh, it is just so much fun. I've performed my whole life in so many different ways, um, yeah. and it is just so much fun to put on costume and a wig or a mask or what have you and be a character and perform for people coming through. And again, of course, 99% of them are awesome and they, they want to yeah. see it and enjoy it. They love it. Yes. Um, so just the performing aspect of it is 
just so fun. And that's really all I can say about that. But the thing that has us coming back every year is really like the community that you create and like the friends that you make. Because every year, you know, when you apply to come back, you know, like, you know, maybe you're going to get a role that you really would not have chosen for yourself or like be put in a maze that like you maybe would have rather not be in that one, but it's where you got placed, what have you. Um, and you, you like, every time I apply, I'm like, all right, here we go again. Like, what am I going to get? What am I going to get stuck with? Maybe I'm going to have like a, a really like uncomfortable costume or like prop or, uh, if I have like a lot of makeup, uh, like when I did Zayorona in 2022, um, by the time I got out of like wig and makeup and costume and everything, uh, I commute an hour to do this. So I was getting home when the sun was coming up. Mm. Most days by the time I oh. get out of makeup oh. and stuff. So it is, it's a big commitment for some people. Um, so you think about like all these things I'm going to have to deal with and like not getting sleep and this and that and the commute and like the makeup and all the stuff and your skin's going to be so raw by the end of the run. And, like, all these <laughs> yeah. things that we think about, we're oh, like, yeah. Oh God, like oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's August again. We, we got to gear up and get ready. But <laughs> the thing that keeps us coming back is the, the friends and the community that you make um, because that's, we all get excited. We, you know, we have our group chats and we're all just looking forward to being together again and seeing each other again. And I've made like some really close friends. Some of my best friends have come from my first year at Horror Nights and we are still inseparable to this day. Um, mm -hmm. So I think just the community that you build, you know, I, when I, my first year, I was a very, very small fish and very big pond. I was like, this is, really overwhelming i don't know what's going on i don't know anybody and those friends that i mentioned who helped me get into it um we were all cast in different places we were right. spread across the park none of them were in my maze with me so i was like alone fending for myself and figuring things out uh mm -hmm. so i went from that to now like i come in and i can say hi to everybody you know i know so many people and it's just mm -hmm. so special to have built that community over four years and make all these really good friends so besides of course the performing aspect that's so much fun i'd say the other most special thing about it and my favorite thing about it is just the the community that you build for yourself and the friends that you make because that's what keeps you coming back every year <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome. what about you B? uh mine is definitely winning over the kids mm -hmm. uh i think it's so fun when like kids come up scared and I'm able to adapt enough to where I stay true to the character, but then I get the kids to like open up and then I get them. I now start getting them playing and I start, you know, I start asking those questions and like kids are like, you could tell that they're opening up and they're getting excited. Um, so like when I do like my day operations, I, I perform as a character who can be, uh, very frightening to small children. Mm -hmm. And so to get them to open up and see that, like, I'm not as scary as I'm perceived to be, right? Mm -hmm. That is one of my absolute favorite moments because then they start playing and they start, like, they start saying stuff. And I'm like, this is gold. I'm literally able to use everything that you're shooting at me. Mm -hmm. And it is the best thing. Even, even at nighttime, too, when when there are some kids who get intimidated, um, getting them on my side, whether them, whether it's them like being like, no, you're a, you're a, you're a bad guy. And I'm like, am I really? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, nothing you say is working. And it's like, this is lost, but just the conversation with this kid is just so, so much fun. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the best parts too. And, and like, catching one over on on like more adult guests too you know like they come in they're like oh i'm gonna get them and then you just deliver that one liner and they're like ah oh, dang it but like <laughs> it's lighthearted, it's fun and you know that's that's kind of what i love the most is is getting the guests to like ah dang it got me <laughs> mm -hmm. right yeah i think with the with me it's probably has something to do with because I, I i do obviously enjoy like scaring folks like i definitely do every time i get a scream like yes it's gonna pump me up for the the set <laughs> to get me through but i do like the interaction i do like the you know the the scene being set again you know at hayride 
you'd be given a whole room that you're pretty much just like working with on your own. You can do pretty much whatever into it. And like if it's like if there's a desk there, you can sit. I don't even have to particularly scare them. Like I don't have to particularly scare them. I can just like literally be there because I can I can often like tell like if I can hear in the other room that they did not scream, they're probably not. I'm probably not going to jump out and give my energy. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm at least going to like let them feel like they're actually within uh the scene and just kind of being a part of a bigger story i remember i was i was placed in the very beginning of the hayride when the tractor is pulling through the barn and i'm like right there and it's one thing that i'd like to do is like i didn't like to jump out like of the barn and actually like jump and scare and stuff like that i would just like find a place to kind of like sit and like look and like at least like set the stage okay you're in the backwoods things are going to go worse from here like that sort of thing um you know yeah (laughs) you know like you know those horror movies were just like turn back turn back (laughs) things like that (laughs) that was one of my favorite things to do even though it was like where i was kind of doing like less you know all right even like stick out a thumb and be like take me with you like sort of thing um and just sort of being a part of something, especially in Hayride, like, which everything being a part of a bigger story. Um, you know, I, I love that sort of, like, immersion. And, you know, it, it was it, it was definitely a joy. And what we do is a joy to a lot. You know, the folks, with, you know, who uh, when you've been waiting for summer to end so this can actually happen, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and we're sort of like here at that, that forefront, you know, to, to welcome them and then other, you know, how the scream fright fest, all those, you know, just bringing those into, you know, reign of terror. If anyone goes through reign of terror, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like a, it's, it's one house, but it takes like 30 minutes to get through it. Oh. So if you get scared, That's cool. you, yeah. So it's, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot, but you know, I, I think, uh, what I'll go into now um, before we sort of like wrap things up, because I know like we have so many experiences that we talk about. This. We, <laughs> might end up doing, we might end up doing a part two of this, John, where you just be like, hey, <laughs> we'll come back and let you know a little bit more stuff. But like, yeah, this is a lot. Um, so like, I'll start with uh, Bryant this time. Like, why should people come to Boogie ba- Bash slash come out for Halloween for you, in your opinion? Um, I, I think they should come out because you want to, you want to get scared. Like you want to be able to have that feeling of like hanging out with your friends or your family. And it's, you know, it's an, it's a whole event, right? You go for the experience, you go for the ambiance, you go to see things that you wouldn't normally see in your everyday life. Um, with like with Oogie Boogie Bash specifically, I will say it's probably one of Disney's most invested and like most all out event that they do. I mean, it's it's in it's in the way that it gets sell, sold out and the way that they've now adapted Oogie Boogie Bash. You will see such quality characters and such quality performances at these events right this is this is the spectacle to go and to be like wow like all right what's next like what you know uh, specifically for oogie boogie because it's more family friendly like let's take the kids let's all get dressed up it's like it's the new halloween event to do you know Mm -hmm. trick-or-treating is fun it's always gonna be a classic it's always gonna be a staple but i think as we progress whether it's you know the the generations as the generations adapt it's it's the new thing to do like we, you go to an event. That's what everyone saves up Halloween for is to let's let's pick an event to go. If if they're able to, let's go to multiple ones, you know? It's mm-hmm. it's the new spectacle. It's the new thing to go out with family and friends. And I think that's why everyone should try to at least go to one of the events. And I you know, there's different tiers of uh comfortability, right? If you mm-hmm. if you love Halloween but you don't love getting scared, um Oogie Boogie Bash, I think is like mm-hmm. the good one to go to. You go, you see amazing characters. There's still a sense of like, um, but it's like very G-rated, you know, Uh, if you want to go for like 
ambiance this and this is like you know my particular opinion based off of what i know uh if you want to go for the ambiance and to just be surrounded by it and a little bit of scary i, I think knott's berry farms like i think they are top tier in their uh they're like scare zones and like walking from like location to location it is just like unmatched in my opinion um if you want to go to get scared Knots is the one like their mazes are like no other that I've been through. And I feel like I have a sort of callus because you can kind of pick up the method of like, oh, I can see where scare actors are going to be. But like uh, Horror Nights at Universal is like, it's just unmatched. Their level with mazes is is phenomenal. And then like you get into the deeper, the, the elite ones like 17th Door and like all those ones that are just like, yeah. <laughs> Like, those are know. those are for the ones that have probably should be going to therapy uh <laughs> it's just crazy um but i think those are like the good levels of like if you want to go and have fun boogie boogie bash if you want to go and just be surrounded and immersed knott's berry and if you just want to go to get scared and really like get into halloween universals like the one to go to mm -hmm. nice nice christine why should people come to Nuts or come out for Halloween in general? What do you think? Well, because Halloween is the best holiday ever, duh. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, it's just to see all of the different creatives and all of the different creations of everything because every single haunt throughout the whole spectrum has something different to offer honestly so it's just so awesome to go and see what everybody's love child has been for the past year or whatever and what everybody puts into their characters because anybody that has ever done a haunt ever loves their job it is their heart mm -hmm. and their soul and their passion so just to go out and to see everybody doing what they love and doing it hard making some lasting scares whether that be giving a little kid a spook and sitting around a pile of bubbles which happened in carnival <laughs> <laughs> or making someone pee because they're so scared just i guess the lasting impressions on everybody but yeah yeah and megan why should people come out to horror nights or for halloween in general well, kind of tacking on what everyone said, you know, I think like Knots and Hayride absolutely kill it with the atmosphere, you know, just like the lights and the fog and just the, the feeling you get there and then getting scared on top of that. That's amazing. Boogie Boogie Bash is great for like families. If you have kids or if you like we said, if you want to experience Halloween without really getting scared or being jump scared um, and Horror Nights, uh, if you're down to get jump scared. <laughs> go to overnights i would say um and also yeah just like the spectacle the quality at universal uh again when i went in 2019 i remember specifically in the ghostbusters maze i think it was the first room i walked in i think i turned to my boyfriend and i was like it's like we're in the movie <laughs> like if that yeah. sounds like fun to yeah. you you know if there's like uh, certain uh movies or ips or what have you that interest you i think going to horror nights and seeing those in person is it's just so fun because it's like you're walking through the movie you'll feel like you're in the movie um i'm probably a little desensitized to it now because i've been doing it for so long and now i feel mm -hmm. like i'm on the other side of it i'm on the back side of it but mm -hmm. uh i can still appreciate all of that and i'd say if you're down to get jump scared and you want to have that like exciting feeling of like seeing these massive like immersive sets Horror Nights might be for you. Um, yeah. Just be ready to get jump scared and startled all night. <laughs> well, we love the jump scares. We love mm -hmm. the jump scares over at HHN. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God! God! <laughs> we love it. Um, with, with Haunted Hayride and, you know, talking about extreme bias because, you know, I've called, been able to call this place a home. Um, but once you go through that tunnel, once you go through those archways, you are transported into a, a different time in general too. And, you know, with the live music playing, you know, who are all undead themselves and with 
you know, the level of immersion it is, you know, if you want to go to a fair that happens to be spooky, but also um, get scared within the mazes, definitely come out. Hayride does a thing where, like, you don't actually particularly have to buy a ticket to go to the event. You just need the ticket to go into, like, the, the mazes and the hayride itself. But you can actually go and eat food, listen to music, and, you know, whatever you want to. Um, and that's just, if that's just enough for you and you don't want to go in to where people are going <laughs> to be terrifying you, <laughs> go for it, you know? Go, you know, go forth and conquer. Um, talking back, you know, on like a, you know, atmosphere and freedom of performance, you know, let's talk, you know, we'll talk about not scary because not scary just looking at things online terrifies me i mean just in general <laughs> christine's instagram uh, <laughs> is pretty nerve-wracking um but there's you know different tiers of it and universal itself is you know bringing these ips to you in a way that like transports you into the movie is crazy how they do it it's crazy how they do it and mm -hmm. Um, it's just awe inspiring. And again, you know, with Boogie Bash, you know, itself too, you know, when you're coming out, a lot of these characters you do not get to see throughout the year. They are here for this event, and you realize once you've seen them that you miss them. That you <laughs> you miss them. You wouldn't have thought, you know, just like seeing Sid from Poster, you're like, you know what? I'm glad you're doing all right. Like, that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, Judge Doom, I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit, so I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, oh, man. What are you doing oh, out so here? cool. It's, a, it's such an awesome thing. Um, and just Halloween in in general, you know, these are different tiers. And, I'm, you know, I'm actually glad that we are all here to be a part of this thing that um, is able to interact with people who will definitely go to all of them. There are the people who will go. I saw, I saw a meme where it's just like, where all my money go during fall? And it's just like, <laughs> hey, right, Boogie Bash. Or right, just every <laughs> hunt they possibly can go to. Queen Mary, you know, it's coming back. It's going to be insane. Um, but, you know, there's that. I think I'll, I'll leave off with this, you know. Um, when you're going through all these these haunts, just to recognize that this is immersive theater there are performers um there are staff that take care of these performers there are staff that's taking care of you um we all know that you want to have fun we all know that like you know it's halloween you want to sip a little bit uh, you know and you want to <laughs> run around and have a blast you know it's come november it's pretty much all gonna end and we're all gonna be jolly but i know you guys want to have fun please be respectful to each and every one of those performers please, um please, please. Please, 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 Sabrina Carpenter. Yes. Please, <laughs> please uh, be respectful, especially since many of the haunts opened on a heat wave. We were doing that. <laughs> we were doing that for y'all. Um, and you know we do it because we love and we love what a lot of you guys do. And you know many of you uh are uh, amazing we have great runs we have great audiences and we love stepping off of set being like that was pretty that was pretty cool you know but let's keep the ball rolling and just please just be respectful to us because we will snitch and we will <laughs> get you kicked out you know like um so that is what i'll leave this episode of the pod on because there is so much more that we can be talking about and October is long and Halloween <laughs> is and still hasn't even started. No, it hasn't even started yet. That's why I'm like literally considering I was like, should we come back? Because there's probably more like you can talk about this. An afterthought. Well, yes. How did your season go? Did you die? Yeah. <laughs> do a do a, a postmortem. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Like November fifth, we're just like so, <laughs> just all disheveled. It's just therapy. <laughs> just like, wait a second, guys. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Losing my five months a week. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Um. Before we all like more than likely transition into performing for Christmas, which I know I'm personally doing. I know that Megan's doing. Brian's doing. You know, we're just all going to be doing different things. So like, uh, 
So we might talk to you guys soon. But like um, performing. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> Megan, if someone wanted to become a fan of you, where could they find you? Instagram and TikTok at Megan X Alexa. You can find me and all of my spooky things there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very spooky things. Some of which you can <laughs> see in the background right here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And Christine, if someone wants to be a fan of you and all your spooky exploits, what would you, what would you, Mine's where would they find really you? really super easy. It's just my name. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> follow me and my taken. shenanigans <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh brian melton let him know instagram brian melton doesn't really go beyond that but you know who knows things <laughs> grow I'm expanding on my social media presence i'm terrible at it but you know i'm working on it it's a hard thing it's the way of the world yeah. um <laughs> yes so me myself too you can find this Instagram. You can find the Instagram personally for me is like Dario underscore freeze, but also like uh, Sage the Screen's Instagram on which this is started. Also, Standing Zero Productions is where this is also posted. So it's pretty much everywhere, and you can find this everywhere you listen. Every single where you listen. Um, and people mostly listen on Spotify and Apple. So broaden your horizons and go someplace else. Go someplace else. <laughs> now we get sponsors go- now? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um okay with that being said this has been a very fun episode of performers one and-